Hello and welcome to this episode which is about the three hows of our solar system. How much it costs, how it's performed and how it can be improved. And I'm up on the roof of La Bolla. You can see a lovely view of the land. And this is until the end. This is it from me. And I'm going to hand up over to somebody who's very competent at talking about our solar system. Because <laughs> I don't do solar. <laughs> Um, before we start this video, I'll just let you know that I'm not endorsing any products. I don't get commission from any products, but in the description below, I will link in everything that I've used and I'll also link in the companies that I've bought it from and I don't receive anything. It's, you know, I'm not getting money for any of this. The heart of our system then itself is the Victron Easy Solar GX, sorry, 48 5000 GX uh, system. When I try to find this in Italy, the best that I could do from an Italian supplier was 3,660 euros. Mm, ouch. Uh, I then looked around and I found a company uh, in Holland called Etronics, and it's in the description box below if you want to see what they are, where they are. And I got it from them for 2,125 euros. And that was delivered here. So I saved 1,500 euros compared to buying in Italy on this on this inverter. I like Victron. The next bit that we bought then was the battery, which is down here. Uh, this one's the BYD LVS 12 batteries, 12 kilowatts. Um, and again, I looked here for an Italian supplier and the best that the Italian supplier I could find was 5,880 euros delivered. I oh, know. So I went back to Etronics, which is a Dutch company, and because everything I buy from Holland is EU VAT paid, and uh, they did it for 4,581 euros delivered. So there was a saving of uh, 1,268 euros. Okay, part of the costings then were for our ballast system to put the solar panels on. I contacted several Italian companies by email, by phone call, all the rest of it, and only one got back to me none of them followed up on it and the quotes that i got from germany about a system that i could put on the roof which is aluminium based was about 1850 euros 1850 euros and that was just delivered without putting up so in the end i went you know what no one gets back to me in italy so i'll do it myself and i found a supplier which is down by taranto it's a concrete manufacturer called mediterranean breton and i'll put the link uh, in the description below and his customer service was, I can only say, exceptional. I emailed them, they emailed back straight away with pricing, costings, availability and transport. So in the end, we've got uh, these concrete ballast supports with the fixing structures and we've got enough to put 12 panels on the roofs and it costs 780 euros, which was cheaper than just a system delivered of aluminium which is going to be 1800 odd euros from somewhere in Germany and I couldn't find an Italian supplier to actually quote all supply ballast materials so I did it myself so give or take we've saved about 1100 euros just on the ballast material. So with these two and obviously the ballasts on the roof just for buying the equipment not in Italy we saved 3,860 euros on purchase costs. The other things that we bought were the solar panels, uh, which we bought from a local company, when I say a local company, it's in Puglia, called Punto Energia. And again, I've linked their website below. And we got some uh, Longi 430 watt solar panels, which are really good for low light as well. And that came to 959 euros. On top of that, for the costing wise, we had the electrician that had to come in twice because I used a qualified Italian electrician to do any AC electrical work. Because this is obviously a DC based system, but all the AC work was done by a qualified electrician. I could have got away with just one day. Unfortunately, because the deliveries, the Italian deliveries, they scoped it out and it was delayed a couple of weeks. I had to bring it back twice. So the ele Italian electrician cost me basically a day and a half, 400 ish euros. And the other expenditure was just short of 600 euros. And that was for all the bits that I bought to make the combiner box, 
I bought the cabling, I bought the solar cabling, I bought the fuses, I bought all this equipment here. I bought some specialist tools because you can't have enough specialist tools. Sally does plants. <laughs> I do specialist tools. You got that one in. I did because <laughs> I need a specialist clamp here for my 70 millimeter battery cable. I also treated myself to proper electrical uh, screwdriver torque talk uh, talk screwdrivers which is brilliant so I actually typed everything up to manufacturer specification and some other bits and bobs so all of those in sundries basically 580 odd euros so the total cost of our system came to just over nine and a half thousand euros in total when I initially quoted or asked an Italian company for a quote they quoted me for a system which was a grid tied system which had less battery power and a less powerful inverter, and they were quoting about 30,000 euros. So realistically, if I wanted someone to put this system in, it would be mid thirties, probably 33, 34,000, and we've paid nine and a half. So we've saved ourselves at least 20,000 euros in costs on an ins installer doing it. And I've also worked out now, based on our projected usage, because I've got a good idea of how much we're using, that our return of investment for this whole system is 40 months. We're already three months into it, so we've got 37 months to go before the whole system is paid off. And Sally and I both feel really pleased with the system because we're doing our bit to be sustainable and power ourselves. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the three months that we've had it going now and how it's performing. Um, just to recap very quickly, this is not a grid tied system. This is an off grid system, which has a power feed from the grid. So if the grid goes down, it can power the house. It doesn't need the grid to run it. And the thing that the Victron does is it does not feed back to the grid. So there is no feedback to the grid. It's all self consumption DC based. So performance wise, I can just sum it up, flawless. Um, the system's gone in and has worked flawlessly. The Victron, which I've used on all our yachts when we did all the work on our yachts, uh, it's been going 40 years and the software is mature. They've been doing it for 40 years. It works every time and you can get everything out of it. I mean, to say I'm pleased with it would be an understatement. I, I, yeah, speechless. Well done, Victron, is all I can say. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, some actual figures. Now, here's the chart from October, which is the first full month that we had it. You can see here that we consumed 362 kilowatts, solar produced 375, and we pulled from the grid 29.4. That's a 95% self-consumption for October. The only reason that we have 29.4 kilowatts pulled from the grid is because the Victron system has to have a continual pull of about 30 kilowatts from the grid so that it can stop feeding back to the grid when you get AC surges. This is a copy of our bill with a rolling 12 month pictorial of our consumption. And if you look at the far right, you can see October, boom, we're down to 30 kilowatts because we're now running on solar. September's about half of what it was because we actually started running the system on the 17th of September. And last year's September bill was about 430 kilowatts. Performing, and one of the reasons that Sally and I wanted to put the DC based system in, in and not be tied to the grid is because here we actually do have lots of I'd call them power surges, momentary power losses, and power cuts. Um, since we've been here, we've had seven proper power cuts, totaling almost 20 hours of power outages. And the system picks it up within 20 milliseconds. And again, it's flawless. It, all of a sudden, all you do is you hear the relay close on the machine if you're in the house. Here, AC2 drops down because this is a non-essential load. So AC2 drops, the system powers AC1, which is the full house. And then what I didn't realize, because I've set it up on the software, is it sends me an email saying, Dear Pete, 
your your grid power has been lost. So when the grid goes down, I get a little email because sometimes I don't even know it's gone down. The system takes over flawlessly. It drops the AC2, how I've designed it, and powers the house. And we sit here quite happy. Um, when the grid comes back on again, Mr. Victron goes, oh, sends me another little email going, oh, your, bit, your grid's been restored. When the grid's been restored, 20 seconds after it's got a good, good grid signal, it reinstates AC2 automatically and everything comes back on. So again, seamless and flawless, which is fabulous. And we don't lose power. One of the biggest things that we found here, and it's been really apparent now that we've got all the software in, is the fact that we get, you can only describe them as power surges or mini power cuts. And they only last for maybe a second or two seconds, but it's enough when this happens, to drop the computers, drop the internet. It when used we, to set the alarm off. Yeah, and it would set the alarm, alarm off yeah. before we put the system in. Mm. Now what happens is that when we get one of these little mini boom, boom, you hear the relay because it's quite distinctive, and you hear this physical relay in the Victron going, kuh, 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 kuh. and it takes over the system instantly, so we don't even get a flicker on the computer. The alarm's not affected. And... It's so quick that it doesn't actually send me an email out, but it doesn't also drop to AC2 because it comes on and off. But what's been happening in the past is that the computers reset, the, the modem resets, the alarm goes off occasionally, all the rest of it. And now I've tracked it for three months, and with the software that Victron's got on there, I can tell you that happens on average once a day. 30, well, anywhere between 28 and 35 a month of these we had no idea it was that often, did yeah, we? Yeah, we had no yeah. idea it was that often, no. but we were in town recently and I was buying something and one of these things happened when I was in town trying to buy something and the guy went, ugh. And we had to stand there for about 30 seconds while, there, while, the, while his machine rebooted and the car thing rebooted. And just as I was beginning to pay, when I did it, I did it again. So I, I, to pay for something took me about four and a half minutes. And now, because of our system and it being a DC off-grid system, it just covers it all and again I'm just so pleased with it that it does it all. From the performance wise I worked out the solar shadow between the top of this panel and the bottom of this panel because I, I wanted to make sure that they were the most efficient throughout the year so we don't get a solar shadow that comes down with low sun angles and I worked out from this 10 degree panel to the 10 degree panel behind I needed 0.75 meters and I've actually put a meter between it and I've been up here during several parts of the days to make sure early morning and evening that I don't get a solar shadow from the front to the rear panels and it works perfectly. I've also done it for the rear set of panels so I've really really gone to town with panel spacing to make sure that I don't get any solar shadows from one panel to the other. Part of the improvements then is to put an extra couple of panels on. I already had the extra spare ballasts because initially I had a different design layout and these were left over after I did the, this design. So I'm going to put an extra two panels up here, which will take our system from 10 panels, which is 4,300 watts, to another 830 watts, so about 5,200 watts on this roof. And because I built my own combiner box, I also planned for the future so I've gone from I'm two strings at the moment of five and I'm going to go for three strings of four because of the voltage into the inverter. So the panels are going to come very soon. I'm going to put them on. I've already pre-done the wiring and I've changed the consumer, the combiner box. So then we're going to go up to five and a bit thousand watts. The last thing that I am going to do is I'm going to add a micro inverter on the roof. If you just follow me for a second, I'll show you over here. On the roof on the lavender ear, just behind us over there, you can see two concrete supports. I'm going to put one more panel over there, but because I can't put it into the DC based system, I'm going to use a micro inverter and put it into the AC based system. So we're going to end up with five, about 5,600 watts of solar. And that AC inverter will actually cover our base running loads. And it works out that the base running that's always going on the house is between 180 and 300 watts of a continual pull. 
and that's a 430 watt panel so it's going to put out about 320 watts so that during the day will just cover the ac loads with the background ac loads and then supplement the 12 dc panels that we've got here so we're going to go from 4003 to about 5700 watts so we hope you've enjoyed this episode and found it really informative, not for me personally, much as I'd like to say that I knew all about the solar system. I don't. I rely pretty much entirely on Pete. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Please make any comments, suggestions, questions or anything you want in the and box Sally below. And Sally will get back to you as soon as she can. <laughs> And this is one, this is one episode, well, be forwarding those on straight to Pete and saying, over to you, darling. Um, and we always reply, we, the royal we, always reply within 24 hours. If you subscribe, that's even better. We'd love to have you on our journey with us at, at La Bola. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>